Finally, before we return to the vocabulary for chapter 9, we come in section 6 to uses of the Hebrew preposition men. You have already learned this preposition with the gloss from away from. Two further common uses of men are noted here, the comparative men and the partitive men. First, the comparative men uses this preposition men to mark the lesser of two items in a comparison. In Genesis 29:30, we have Vayehav gam et Rachel melea. Vayehav is what we call a narrative verbal form, which we will discuss in chapter 12. It glosses as and he loved. Gam is the particle also. Et marks the definite direct object of a, of a verb. And then we have the name Rachel and the name Leah. But notice it's not simply the name Leah. We have Mi Leah with a doubling of the Lamed. This is Min with the noon of Min having assimilated into the Lamed, causing its doubling. Min marks Leah, the lesser of the two loved by Jacob. In Judges 11.25, we have Va'ata hatov tov ata mibalak. Va, the connector and, ata, now. Then ha tov, what is this he at the front? This is the interrogative he. He's asking a question. Are better, are good. Tov, are you? So, and now, are good, good you? And then the name balak, but again, note that we have a min with the noon having assimilated, causing a dagesh forte in the name Balak. Are you good more than Balak? In English, are you better than Balak? The lesser of the two is marked by the comparative min. Secondly, we have the partitive min. This is the use of the preposition min to indicate some of a thing or group. In Genesis 25:30, Esau asks for men ha adom, some of the stew. In Genesis 33:15, we have men ha am, some of the people. You can almost think of the partitive men as being from the stew or from the people, but in English we use the phrase some to indicate this partitive idea, some of it. There are further common uses of the preposition men, and for detail on those, you should consult an intermediate grammar or lexicon.